That was a short extract of Remembrance by Iranian visual artist Shirin Neshat, who's in Paris with her exhibition Looking for Um Kultum. Now, for over three decades, she's used art, poetry, music, photography and film to document her experience as an immigrant and addressing themes like forced exile, feminism and the contrasts between Islam and the West. Shireen joins us in the studio today. Hello, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, first of all, um, your exhibition Looking for Um Kultum was inspired by a film of yours of the same name that was shown at the Venice Film Festival in 2017. And it's no coincidence that it's being shown uh, here in Paris at the Galerie Azedin Alaya, um, the late Tunisian fashion designer like you was a big fan of Um Kultum, one of Egypt's most revered singers. Um, why pay homage to her? Well, there are so many reasons that I could speak forever. I spent about six years making this project and asking myself, what is the obsession that I've had? But I think across the board, Um Kultum has become such an important symbol for so many thousands of women from the Middle East, uh, including people from Iran. Um, she is single most important artist of the 20th century that happened to be a woman, happened to be loved by rich, poor, Christians, Muslims, Jews. It's a woman artist that uh, brings together a part of the region that is always in conflict. She remains as the most popular um, singer in that region. Uh, and of course, she becomes a mirror for myself as a smaller artist. We'll delve into your background in a second, but first let's take a look at one of the videos from your exhibition, Shirin, called In Trance. <laughs> Can you tell us a bit more about In Trance? That particular video is about the relationship of Um Kulthum to her fans, as she was so commonly known to throw her audience into the state of ecstasy, trance, uh, where they literally fell apart. They forgot uh, the sense of time and place, what they call tarab. And, and, and it was almost like an orgasmic experience. And to this day, uh, the people who's her music has been a part of their life. They know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, I noticed a recurring theme of shadows and blurs in your work. Is that a deliberate um, technique? Is it symbolic for you in some way? Well, you know, I, my work in, in may, many ways has had a footing in realism and surrealism, uh, dream and illusion um, and reality. And so I think in a way uh, of creating images that um, becomes, you know, clear to blurry. It's also taking the audience, navigating through different realms. Now, uh, Book of Kings, that was uh, a work that you did in 2012. Yes. Um, it captured the faces of the Arab Spring uprising. There were a lot of similarities to your seminal work, Women of Allah, from the 1990s. Looking for Um Kultum, that the, the video installation here in Paris was inspired by the movie. Um, you often revisit your old work for new exhibitions. Why is that? Well, it's interesting because the woman of Allah, it was uh, pursuing a single protagonist, like myself was playing the role, which was the female martyr. Uh, as the work progressed, I think the work, even in photography, became more narrative. The Book of Kings was really not at all about a single person. It was about the movement. It was about the popular uprising in, in Iran and in the Middle East. And, and it was my way of capturing that euphoric moment of patriotism and the notion of activism that became so contagious. Let's uh, take a listen now to uh, gallerist Jérôme de Noirmont, a longtime collabor collaborator and friend of yours. He's talking about that series we mentioned before, Women of Allah. In the photo series, Women of Allah, which included some of her first pieces made in 1996, 
She writes in Farsi words and calligraphy on the photos. She underlines the standing of women in Islam, and not just in Islam, but the standing of women in all societies. I think it's important to show and confirm the equality or even the superiority of women over men. Now, Muslim women, you know, generally are uh, often depicted as being submissive, but in your work, um, women are strong, they're rebelling against the system. Why is it so important to you to show that side? Because essentially that's how I feel about that kind of feminism that it arises from that part of the world, in the Middle East, particularly speaking about the Iranian culture, that is true that throughout generations, women have been against the law, whether through dictatorship or religion or the government, um, but they've always protested. They've always been very defiant and, and, and resilient. And, and so uh, I think the work that I do, it, it sort of confirms that there is oppression, um, but it also confirms that women are very defiant and always uh, very confrontational and rebellious. Um, so I think in every single photograph or video or film that I've ever made, uh, the women are never losers. Now, what does it mean to be an Iranian woman uh, in 2019? Well, I think that, um, you know, sp speaking for women who live in Iran, I think that really I take most inspiration from them um, because although the situation in Iran has been very complicated and difficult, um, but they have shown um, such strength and, and through being very educated and very modern thinking, forward thinking, um, the Iranian women have been participating in every part of the public domain and, and have made huge change in the Iranian society. So I think that what we can see is extremely positive and, uh, and is very promising for the future. And I even see in the for future that could be a woman that could be the president of Iran. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I, I really can see that. <laughs> now, um, you said, um, you know, forward thinking and modern. Um, your father was quite progressive, wasn't he? I mean, he was yes. the reason that you went to the U.S. in the 1970s. He pushed you and your siblings to go out, get an education, uh, no matter how daunting that was. What influence did he have on your work today, on um, you? Yeah, I think what I took from my father was that he was not a traditional man. He was a real individual. He always thought for himself. He was very worldly. Um, and and he, he was, in a way, always rebelling against the system that was, he was raised with, which is the tradition. Um, and, and that um, I also feel that um, his approach to life in the way that, you know, I... I am a very independent person. I am not completely Iranian. I'm not completely American. I am a nomad. And um, I don't quite belong to any particular groups. Uh, I, I have this universe inside of me, and, uh, and, and that's my world. And I, I always felt like my father lived in this kind of bubble that it didn't really belong to anywhere. And, and so uh, I... I think I took that from him. Now, your second exhibition is in uh, Los Angeles right now. It's a chronological collection of some of, some of your most iconic works, including Women of Allah. But r in recent times, you've actually shifted your focus away from Iran. Your most recent work, um, Land of Dreams, was shot uh, in New Mexico. That's right. That's right. Um, and it tackled a completely different topic, U.S. Um, politics and immigration. Why, why the shift? You're absolutely right. The exhibition in Los Angeles at the Broad begins with my earliest work, uh, Woman of Allah, me as an artist outside of Iran, looking into Iran uh, and trying to understand the Islamic revolution, etc. Throughout the exhibition, um, as we go throughout the later years, when I'm not able to go back to Iran, I start losing that sense of nostalgia and my attention goes to the other parts of the world, including to Egypt, to Azerbaijan. Eventually, I come back to the country where I live. And I think that in the recent years, especially after Trump administration, uh, where a lot of immigrants started to feel a lot of anxiety and after the 
and travel bans and the Muslim bans. And, um, I felt that for the very first time, I was prepared as an immigrant artist to make a work that gives my reflection, my point of view uh, about America, the America that I know, and the, the good and bad, the, 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 the political injustice, but also the values that I cherish about this country. Shirin Nishat, thank you so much for joining us here on France 24. You can check out her exhibition, Looking for Um Kultum, at the gallery Azadine Alaya in Paris. Uh, let's leave you now with some music from Um Kultum, one of Egypt's most legendary singers. This song is Alf Leila Walela. Do you know this song? Yes. <laughs> um, well, you can check this out. Remember our website. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. <laughs> Thank you.